five kids. I've been married for like nine years. And on this channel, I share homemaking stuff. Oh, an incredible latte art. Not, mm. Homemaking specifically in the kitchen. Because when I am doing homemaking, this is where it happens. This is where I really make home. Everywhere else in my house, it's, it's very different than what I specifically do here. And that's why there's many reasons, but one of the reasons I really just showcase homemaking in the kitchen. I also feel like homemaking in the kitchen can really make or break you. Some people have incredible homemaking through the rest of their house and they struggle in the kitchen, maybe vice versa for others. But I find if the kitchen isn't running well, other things really do feel like, personally for me, fall apart. So that's why I really focus a lot of time here. Anyway, today I thought I'd do a Q&A. I asked my Patreons to send me questions for me to answer. We're also in a, a sunny, cloudy day, so our lighting's gonna be all over the place, don't mind that. If you're not a Patreon, you should be. I'm posting all my recipes that will be on my new and improved website for my Patreon family first. I have shared it to some other people using my Patreon, but from now on, it is just for people who signed up for the Sarah Doe starter. So if you haven't done that yet, just do it. It's five bucks a month, and it's a great way to support me and get some cool new recipes and content. So I'll be reading off the Patreon post as well as some DMs that were sent my way. And while all this is happening, I thought I would also shape my buns. Kira asks tips on how to be present in your faith in everything, talking, dressing, raising kids. Some people classify that as like living your faith out loud. I mean, it's basically just honoring the Lord and what he says in his word and doing it in your everyday life. It's hard because there's also different ideas in that. Like someone's modest is very different from another person's modest. So I encourage you to read your word, get connected to a church, talk about it in a safe community setting and be vocal about the word what you're reading, what you're doing. I love having these kiddos around because I'm able to be so vocal about what I'm doing in my Bible and my devos. And they ask, and it's also prayer, it's calling out to the Lord. The work of the Holy Spirit in your life basically means you cannot go forward uh, in your life and not have the presence of faith be very evident. Tveen says, I want to be a better homemaker. I find it hard to get creative and aesthetic. Any times, uh, no, advice in how to start or ways to make the home and haven and peace for the family. Every family is ridiculously different. I don't feel like I have an aesthetic because I feel like I just like uh, everything, <laughs> except for gray, don't like gray. Basically seeing like what does your family need and what do they thrive off of. So what I notice is my family thrives off of having things that are accessible. I know my family also enjoys things that are clutter free. And because we live in quite a rainy, cloudy area, things like bright colors and colors in general feel really fun and beautiful. In our next house, which that'll be years down the line, I'm sure, I want more color. I want colorful cabinets, I want more warmth, I want more dark colors, like I want to set a mood. So anyway, it's, it's figuring out how your family functions and then just trying to benefit them in those ways. It takes years, it took me years of actually figuring that out. So you gotta kind of live your life and then you'll learn through experience. Everyone's asking about baby number six. I am not expecting a six baby, but to be honest, I wasn't really expecting even my third baby in some ways. I know the Lord has a plan, but we are not trying for any more. We want to stick with five. We like the number five. Our minivan's full and our house is full. And even though I know if uh, the Lord blessed us with a six, that'd be cool and we would be like, this is great. It wouldn't be something that would be very depressing or sad. But also at the same time, believe it or not, I'm not a huge baby person. I don't have babies because I'm obsessed with the baby stage because I'm not. I really love when my kids turn two, three, four. That's when I feel like is really fun when life gets real good. Thank you to Haya for sponsoring this portion of today's video. If you've been an avid watcher of my channel, Haya is not new to you. These children's vitamins are very unlike the ones you would get at the store. The ones you might get off the shelf are loaded with gummy gunk, artificial colors, flavors, and honestly things a little growing body should just really not have. Haya has zero added sugars, zero gummy gunk, and also Picky Eater approved. My kids love having these every single day. Haya also makes your life simple as a parent. So the first order that you get, you will get this glass bottle. And then every month following, you will get one of these in the mail. It is your children's vitamin refill in a zero plastic pouch. Haya is created with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, and then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals for your kids. This will help support their immune system, brain function, energy levels, and so much more. Haya is non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, allergen-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, 
and pretty much anything else you can think of. I love using Haya because it lets me take control over my kids' health. It is also pediatrician approved and helps fill any gaps in my kids' diets. If you want to save 50% off your first order, go to HayaHealth.com forward slash Sarah Therese or I made it easy for you. Just click the link in the description. Cassia said she's a homeschooling mom of six and wants some tips on homeschooling and managing a kitchen and a home. She's struggling to do it all. Same, a hundred percent. I never go into my day with ease and go, oh, this is so simple. Every day is difficult. I also work, so that's like another thing that gets thrown onto it, but both me and my husband work from home together. So there is a little bit of uh, elasticity that we both have, and it's nice having both of us work towards certain things together like homeschool and work and home. Just some homeschooling tips is that if you can keep everything basically in one spot, do it. There are some homeschooling mamas, and I don't know how they do it, but they work really well off of having their kids homeschool all over the house, like in various areas. For me, all of our homeschool is in one area, and then any novels and extra read-alouds, those will be in a separate place, like in a shelf, but they're all in that same shelf. Keep everything together, centralized, and also accessible for your kids so they can get started on homeschool, even without your help. And then for managing a kitchen and doing it all, honestly, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes our really good homeschool days mean that the kitchen is lacking and then vice versa. And sometimes my days are awesome and everything works out really well. But every day is different. I know there's so much grace, but I honestly, for me, it's like, what is the priority for today? I write it down. That is my priority list. And it's usually homeschool, dinner, and a load of laundry. Star wants to know how I close the year and open the new one. Reflection, goals, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I haven't done New Year's resolutions or goals or words in um, years. I actually realized it was something that felt more frustrating for me than anything. Just trying to find a word, just trying to do it, just trying to have New Year's resolutions and then failing at them or something. And I was like, you know what? My goal shouldn't be these things. And that's just a personal, that's just how I function. And I honestly need I need to work on being not so self-focused. So if I have resolutions, if I have goals, if I have words, it's so self-focused for me. Um, so I just haven't been doing any of it. I don't ever feel like the new year feels so new and brand new. There is a freshness that comes with it, but uh, I have completely let go of words, goals, resolutions, because I just found they didn't serve me in the way that uh, maybe they serve others. What kind of homeschool curriculum do I use? Memoria Press. When do you start doing sit down schoolwork? Not until kindergarten grade one. Steffo, hi Steffo, we chat, she's so great. Best part of Christmas is tucking presents under the tree and Christmas breakfast. That's my favorite. My favorite color is green. Have I heard of 16 personalities? No. Personality things are just kind of, they're interesting to me, but I think they can kind of get out of hand. Highlight of 2023. Highlight of 2023 was stopping breastfeeding. That was, and I know that's like so weird, but I, I love breastfeeding and I always love stopping it. It's not very often I've ever felt really heavily connected to breastfeeding. It's something I do enjoy stopping. Looking forward to in 2024, Lord willing, no more children and uh, fixing up this house entirely. Um, Sarah wants to know, is there anything taught in public schools you don't agree with? Or is homeschooling an opportunity to add additional content for your children? Uh, yes and yes. So there are things in the school system I don't agree with. I also don't want my kids babysat. So I've talked to a lot of teachers in the public and private school system and they said most of the day they're just babysitting kids. I don't want my kids to be babysat and I don't want to have to pay that much money for them to be babysat. Um, for school kids, a lot of them are sent to school for an entire day, seven, six, eight hours. My kids are done school within one or two hours uh, because we're having one-on-one -on -one direct go, go, go time. And that's book work. And then the rest of the day is free play, going outside, walks. And I was also homeschooled as a kid and uh, I, I wanted to give that to my kids as well as my husband. He was also homeschooled. Most helpful birthing tool was the bathtub and then the comb. If you haven't seen my birth videos, they're in my previous channel. And the past couple ones, I relied on a bathtub and comb 
to help me get through not only just transition, but all the contractions right up to birthing my baby. What sport or workout am I doing and when? Struggling to find time. I am not. My life is a workout. I've been having huge knee and wrist issues. That could be postpartum, that could be anything. But all I know is that I don't like it and it's actually, I feel like it's the Lord telling me to slow down and be gentle on myself. So if I'm doing anything, it's with my kids. Uh, it's walks, it's hiking, and um, I also do stretches every single day because I like to have a lot of motion and flexibility through my body. Hold on, I gotta clean up this flower off the floor. All right, here are my buns. Ta -da. I'm gonna let these rise. I think what I'm just gonna do with these, they're gonna be like breakfast sandwiches. Uh, put some eggs, some local ham in there, it'd be so good. Um, do you ever watch your old videos? How do you feel about them now? Your content evolving over time? I never watch my old videos, ever, ever. I have completely separated myself uh, from my old videos, previous channel. I'm also not a, <laughs> this is funny, I'm a YouTuber and I do not watch YouTube videos. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I actually watched a YouTube video. It's not, it's not something I've done. I reach for a book before I reach for YouTube. My content evolving though, I know how that's just happened naturally because it used to take me days, sometimes weeks to edit a video previously and now with this channel, it slowed down. I can do it in an evening at my own pace. It's simple. So my content is more simplified. But I think also I was just over the clickbait, I was over these thumbnails, I was just over it. And I thought, you know what, if you wanna watch my content, do it. I don't wanna force you to or clickbait you into it or make it seem like more than my video really is. I guess I just wanted to finally be a little bit more honest and truthful with what I was presenting uh, in my content. Sport or activity you wanted to do as a kid you never pursued? Uh, no. I wanted to pursue dance and I did when I was a kid, but now as an adult, I wish I could go back and also pursue a type of music, but I didn't, and that's on me. How often are you recognized out in public? Probably weekly. What kids show drives you crazy? Uh, I don't know. My kids don't watch anything that drives me crazy. We love like Little Bear, <laughs> simple stuff. Funniest, weirdest sponsorship offer you've ever gotten? Socks socks it was like one star rated socks on amazon and they wanted to do it for in exchange for product so i would do a dedicated youtube video in exchange for one star rated socks uh candace has all the questions okay spitfire did you get anything for christmas yes a brand new sewing machine if your life was a movie who would play you a <laughs> an unconventional pet you would want to have Ooh, i'd love an ant farm in my house um but I'd also, I would probably hate to have an ant farm in my house. An ant is also not an animal. Your favorite quality about yourself? Um, very goal oriented and I work well with goals, but that might also be something I don't like about myself because um, if I don't hit my goal, I don't rest until I do, so. Jump into a pool of anything, what would it be full of? Um, my church family. <laughs> Heaven said she's having her second child, her babies will be 17 months apart. When did I move my babies into a bedroom with their siblings? Any advice on that transition going from one to two? After I was done breastfeeding through the night, I would move a child in with their siblings. So five, six months. I have also had kids like a year and a half apart, 13 months apart, 15 months apart. I have a two and a half year gap actually, which is kind of crazy. Advice on that transition is to stay down low. So when I had Ivy, it was like, I didn't have to worry about anyone down low because I just had Ivy and I could pick her up and if we were together, we were together. But as soon as I had Calvin, my second, Ivy could feel that separation if I was picking up Calvin and leaving her down low. So we became full on ground dwellers. We ate breakfast on the ground, lunch on the ground, we played on the ground, we slept on the ground. I was on the ground constantly, so Ivy would never feel like it was us up here and her down below. Gabrielle wants to know what my cleaning routine looks like now. She needs some ideas. So I still do one load of laundry a day, one to two loads of dishes in the dishwasher every day, which means I should probably start doing that. Kitchen, deep cleaned once a week. Bathrooms, deep cleaned once a week. And then other areas we just get to. Because we homeschool at the dining room table, which is where we also eat, that area gets wiped down three times a day because because of that, we can't leave breakfast 
for lunch cleanup. It has to be cleaned up if we want to do school. So for us, there's areas in our home that just get really dirty that need to be cleaned weekly. The kitchen, the bathrooms, and then there's some areas that just get dusty. I leave that to the kids. And that's another thing. If you have kids, your kids can do dishes. Usually the kids do this, but I'll do this because I'm here. For me, it was like, what needs the most attention? What gets gross at this time? How can my kids help? How can I do this efficiently? But I gotta tell you, one load of laundry a day, seriously, it changes everything. She also wants to know, how has minimalism changed with the more children I have? How have you maintained it? There's some things I can't change. My kids have to have lots of curriculum and books for school, and I don't stay minimal with certain things. Books, absolutely not. Dishes, no. There are things that we need constantly and go through constantly. So much of the time people think minimalism means that you just don't have a lot of stuff. That's not what it is. It's you don't have more than what you need. I still have a small wardrobe. It's actually a capsule wardrobe. <laughs> My kids have smaller wardrobes. A huge way we actually kind of decide to do a little bit more of a minimalism in a sense is uh, only having one car, which is kind of difficult, but it's still been doable. Minimal amount of toys and then also doing a toy rotation. No clutter, no clutter. There are certain little things I have through my house that I use and I enjoy, but I don't consider it clutter because again, I use them often and I enjoy having them around. But yeah, kids are hard because with kids come items, but you can still kind of help your kids and instruct your kids on this is something you use, this is something you don't. Let's keep what you use and let go of what you're not. Sourdough whole wheat seeded bread loaf recipe. Your recipes are my go-tos. Wondering if you have any ideas. This is from Judith. Um, kind of. Whenever I want to make something more whole wheat and seeded, I will replace a half a cup or even a quarter of a cup of the white flour with whole wheat flour and I'll just throw in seeds. Chia, hemp, sunflower, sesame. I really like sesame seeds. I would like to try my sourdough bread loaf like sandwich loaf recipe with whole wheat and adding some seeds to the inside as well as coating it in seeds. That. Oh. That would be so good. But yeah, I can say I have not heavily entered the seed world with baking um, online. I've just kind of been doing it in my own time, but that's something uh, I would like to get into on a more recipe basis and then be able to share with you guys. How long have you been married for? Nine years. I am 28 years old and I got married when I was 19. <laughs> when I got married at 19, I did not expect my life to be like how it is today. That was probably the dream. And a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now was written in my bucket list, even when I was like 14. So that is like so cool. When we got married, we bought a old mobile. Everyone we knew was renting. It was cooler to rent because you got to rent cool new spaces, but then you never got that money back because you can't sell what you rent. And I was like, I don't want to be that person. I don't. <laughs> not saying if you did that, that was a bad thing. But for me, I was like, if I want to have kids young I need to get in the market now so that's what we did we lived in that mobile for almost five years had three of our kids in it birthed one of our kids in it Taylan asked what's your favorite memory with your sister Rachel we have millions of memories together definitely something to do with car rides we always just had the funnest time being in a vehicle in close proximity to each other we got hyper we would laugh we would sing we would sleep we would play games, there was just something about being together in a vehicle that was so fun. We also grew up doing lots of skiing and snowboarding together, which was great. And honestly, 